another Saturday night of racing in the books here at the Punta Gorda Speedway. It's the toughest track in the south, and it's turn five racing. What's that? It's that final turn off the track. All the tires are aired up in the car, and you can put it on the trailer. It's a good night of racing once you've hit turn five. Well, it's been an exciting night of racing here at the Punta Gorda Speedway for the past old 2012 season. Now we're getting into 2013. Probably one of the most exciting classes that come out here in one of the traveling series is the Florida TQ Midgets, and uh, they never disappoint. Yes. Yeah, Sometimes the car counts are low, but man, do they make up for it in the excitement on the track. Got a couple drivers here with me tonight from the TQ Midgets. Going to start with the youngest one here, and uh, probably a name in uh, open wheel racing that's pretty synonymous here in the state of Florida, Gimler. Chris Gimler, how you doing, bud? Good to see you again. Thank you. Um, I'm good. You know, um, one of the big things that I always talk about whenever I come down into the winner's circle, because you've, you've been having some, some podium finishes, had a win tonight, um, is just how sideways you get that car and just how the seat of the pants driver you are, man. Yeah, I don't know. Um, we've tried to come up with a few possibilities. It could be just so much crossweight or maybe the shock, but it, it works. You know, and, and, and it's funny, and it's like you always say, it works, it works. I mean, are you comfortable driving the car that sideways? Yeah, it I seems easier that way. <laughs> you know, and, and it it never ceases to amaze me, because I can look, you, you'll come up off the floor by, by the tower, and I can read the whole side of the car whenever you come off of there. But uh, let, let's get in a little bit of the, the history of you racing. And, you know, you, you came on the scene, and it's like, I didn't know there was a younger Gimler coming up through the ranks to race. Did you get your start in TQs? Yeah, I, um, we were going to try go-karts before, but we didn't. Um, my great-grandpa owned a track in Riverhead. He opened it up in like 1950. He raced with Jack Duffy, who races with us sometimes. So did my grandpa, my dad, and my uncle. Jack Duffy's pretty old. Uh, <laughs> you mentioned Jack. You mean, I love Jack. Jack's a great guy. Um, what's it like? Have you gotten the chance to race with Jack yet? Yeah, it's uh, he's raced with all four generations. It's, it's got to be interesting when he shows up and you probably being the youngest guy out there. I mean, does it give you a hard time? Yeah, he's really funny. He always tells me about stopping and turn in the middle of the turn for donuts, and I don't know. He's far. Or does he tell you you, you got to find a blonde girl to come with you? Oh yeah, yeah. He makes fun of my dad and my mom. <laughs> That's some pretty good company to hang out with and to give you a hard time. But um, have you driven anything else? Have you driven any full-bodied stock cars? I mean, is is that something you might want to do, or or do you like just staying in the open wheels? I mean, I want to try anything, anything that I can race, but uh, we are, we're working on the sprint car to get it out, and hopefully we can have it out by the next race. We don't know yet, but it's coming together. So was was that, I know you wanted to go to the sprint cars, was that something where your folks or your family kind of went, uh, we're not sure if you're ready or not, or, or, or were you pushing the issue to get, wanting to go to the sprint cars? Oh, no, uh, me and my dad, we're all for it. My mom's kind of scared but i mean you know it's it's a lot more it's a lot of work and i i'm i want to try it so bad i'm so excited you know we've we've seen a lot of young drivers come up through the ranks here in the state of florida and florida racing i mean by far i mean you can go anywhere in the united states i think probably some of the toughest drivers come out of the state of florida and i don't know if it's just something in the water down here i mean what are your plans do you is is racing something that you might want to pursue as a career or or is this something that you're doing for fun for a hobby just something that you love i mean careers would be awesome but i mean whatever whatever i can do you know i mean well you know not racing that much this this whole year we won't be racing that much i mean we got between the sprint car and the tq we'll have like all the same races in the same spots but i want to I want to bring up the cars up north and see what happens, but I mean, that's so much money, so it's kind of hard. That would be kind of cool. Probably go back up there around the northeast and everything where, where the rest of your family's ran and everything else. That would be kind of cool to go back with the Gimler name and people are kind of like, who's this kid? Yeah, I know. They, they'll have no idea who I am and be pretty cool to race with them. And let's see, you're 18 years old now? Uh, I turned 19 in September, yeah. All right, so you're done and out of school, doing any college or anything like that? Yeah, there's a college right by my house, and I just, I'm, um, hopefully I can go there until I can go to maybe like UF or something. That'd be pretty cool. 
Yeah, that would be cool, especially. I mean, we've watched a lot of kids in racing in the state of Florida go to college and come back college grads and do the racing thing. And uh, But it's cool seeing you come out here. And I know you guys, I know the TQs race here a lot. And uh, it's just so cool watching you come out here. Another another Gimler person, another Gimler family member out here behind the wheel, especially the young guys out here doing it. Yeah, um, it's really cool. Steven, racing with Steven, I think Steven's... I mean, he might be 18 now. He's really cool. He's uh, my age. He's pretty fast. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, I know you guys got a long drive ahead of you to get out of here, so I'm going to cut this just a little bit short with you so you guys can get boogieing because I know it's a long, dark ride from the Punta Speedway back all the way over to Palm Beach Gardens across the swamp. But uh, anybody you want to thank that helps you, helps you get here? Well, to get me here, uh, my grandpa drives three hours every single time. Citrus County, five hours. He's... He drives us all over the place. My dad, uh, he does everything for me. Like, he's, I can't do anything, you know. I can't do it without him. He's helping me build the sprint car, and so is my grandpa. My uncle helps me a ton. Uh, Dean welds everything, especially when I crash and stuff. Um, uh, my aunt Jean, my grandma, my mom for letting me race. My whole family, really, everybody. You, This track, I mean, it's, the main track to race at so I mean hopefully it doesn't go away well I hope it doesn't go away and we just got to uh, keep saying our prayers and uh, you know before we go to bed at night and keep knocking on their door across the street and I think everything will be all right but uh, thank you for joining us on turn five racing and keeping uh, actually my hands are full here we'll do that and uh, just keep coming out here and turning that wheel and and giving this guy over here on the other side of me a hard time right I know and he won the championship last year uh, congratulations to him you know he already knows so all right, cool. Well, Chris Gibbler hanging out with us here on Turn 5 Racing, and uh, we're going to turn around over here and go to the 2012 Florida TQ Midget Champion and one of the loudest mouths in the South, Rob the Cowboy Kohler. Congratulations on your championship, man. It's too cool. Yeah, thanks a lot, Jason. You know, uh, I'm really blessed to have uh, fallen into the situation that I'm in. Uh, great car owner, awesome car, and, um, you know, we had a good, consistent season last year, and that's how we won the championship. Chris won six races out of, I think we had at 13 last year Chris won six of them um, and it was it was merely bad luck you know in a couple situations that kept him from winning the championship you know um, I'm just I'm really I'm really blessed I don't know how I wound up in the situation that I'm in but I'm enjoying myself well it's it's, it's really been quite an interesting situation all the way around I mean uh, I remember I, I went over to the dirt track and we were both announcing there and then, then you left and then you came over here started announcing and then all of a sudden it's like, man, can you get back over here and announce? I've got, I've got to race a race car, man. Yeah, you know, I mean, that's how it worked out. Uh, I came over here to drive the dwarf car for Mike Belusher, um, and you were interviewing me that night uh, out on the racetrack, and you're like, hey, what are you doing next weekend? Uh, they need somebody to announce here, and you were announcing over in Clues, and I was like, yeah, I'll do it, you know, whatever. And, uh, boy, that turned into a solid year of, of, you know, and I had a blast because i, I got to admit to you folks, um, I've all my life I've been a huge Dirt fan. Um, I've, I've strongly said it many, many times, Dirt is for racing. Asphalt is just for getting there. Um, but, man, I come over here to Punta Gorda, and, and what a great family atmosphere this is. You know, I mean, everybody out here took me right in. You know, when I started announcing, um, they gave me, you know, the love, the Punta Gorda love, you know, and, and really made me feel at home over here. And I had a great time coming to the Speedway. Um, I got to race that uh, dwarf car, uh, I think, eight times throughout the year while I announced here. And um, it was awesome. I, I had a great time. And then Jimmy McKinney stepped up and said, hey, you know what? We got this 30 car. We built us a, a new car. Why don't you drive this uh, TQ Midget for me? And um, that was kind of a, a dream, you know. Uh, I'd love to be in the situation where Chris is, where he's going to move on and drive some sprint cars. I mean, that would be awesome. That was, that's where drivers like me you want to get to you know you want to get up and you want to drive a sprint car and, and that's you know that's people retire from driving sprint cars and go drive Winston Cup a uh, sprint cup whatever they want to call it nowadays um, you know when you when you start to feel like you know you don't want to go that fast anymore you, you step down away from sprint cars that, that to me is the top 
you know, echelon of drivers, you know, sprint car drivers. So I'd love to work my way up into a situation like that. But that's a big money game, you know, and you got to be on top of it. And and right now, I'm just I'm just glad that I have found a seat in the the Florida TQ Midgets. Um, we have a great time with it. It's definitely been cool seeing you behind the wheel of the midget. I mean, it was I talked to you before. I knew a little bit about your history. You started racing dirt bikes a long time ago. Uh, no, it was uh, four ATV four wheelers. Yeah, yeah. And then then you got into this this TQ midget. I mean, to me, I mean, you know, I'm a big guy. I mean, a couple of guys have already told me, hey, come take the TQ midget for a spin. I'm like, I'm not fitting in there. But even though I'm skinny, those cars are, are just really intimidating to me as being a race car driver. Yeah, I'll tell you what, uh, it's it, it was a change too. Going from the dwarf car, which, um, you know, the dwarf cars are a hand, handful themselves, um, but uh, car and driver in the dwarf car, you weigh about 1,300 pounds. And um, I know that doesn't sound like much, but the the TQ midgets are 625 pounds of race car without the driver in it. Um, you know, you throw me in there, I think our, our cruising weight is like 822 pounds. Um, that's not a lot of weight to try to stick down to that racetrack out there. And, and you comment many a times of how we're coming around the corners and we're on three wheels. Well, you got to get that weight to roll over onto the right rear tire or you can't get any bite out of it, you know. And, and it's just... It's a whole different driving style than anything I've been involved in, you know, because now you're, you're, uh, you know, you're just throwing that thing down in there, and and you really you got to get that weight transfer to get the car to do what you want it to do. Uh, and I watch guys struggling, you know, maybe they're throwing it over too far and the wheel's carrying too high in the air or they're not carrying it at all and and, and it's not handling. Um, I've just been lucky that, you know, Mike dialed that car in before I ever sat in the seat or we'd have never won the championship this year. There's just too many variables going into the handle of those cars right there alone. But, um, you know, you guys come out here, your, your family comes out here. Who's some of the people I know? Jimmy McKinney are behind the scenes and they're like the main ones on board. Who are some of the other people that come out here and help you get this job done? Yeah, obviously, you know, Jimmy McKinney is the car owner there, and he finances the operation for me and Mike. Um, Mike Belusher does all of the setup on the cars, and uh, he maintains them through the week when I can't be there. Um, The cars are up here in Punta Gorda. I live in Naples. Um, I do come in, you know, usually the Thursday or Friday before the race, and and we do a nut and bolt check and get the car all checked out and everything. But uh, Mike Belusher... And uh, his friend Don, um, they they maintain the car and, and get me to the track. Um, now, like you know, as far as uh, you know, people that I rely on, my mom comes out to every race, um, and she's you know she's a huge supporter, and, and it's it's great for me to have to have her around and uh, you know somebody to lean on when when things aren't going right or whatever. She's uh, she's a strong woman, so she helps me out by coming out here. Um, and then you know I just love. You know, you're you're down there getting interviewed in Victory Lane, and here come all the kids. You know, and and they all want to take a picture with you. And I just think that's great. You know, that uh, that the Speedway gives all the drivers the opportunity to have their family come out onto the track when you get a podium finish, and uh, and you know you get interviewed and everything. And that that makes us feel big time. You know, I mean that's that's what it's all about is uh, is getting the family involved in it. And um, I appreciate Punta Gorda giving us that opportunity. Well, we've enjoyed watching the race this year, and and once again, congratulations on your championship and uh can't wait to do it again you guys are going to be back on the second yeah i'm, I'm really looking forward to that uh, we're coming back out here uh, that'll be the start of our point season for the tq midgets um, and then also obviously you've got the sprint cars racing that night the tbara uh, event going on um, that's going to be a, an awesome show i'm sure all of us tq drivers want to win right chris you're going to want to win that show um, you know being that we got all the the sprint car drivers here you know we're going to want to show off in front of them so so i think that's going to be a great show to watch uh, you know all you open wheel fans that is going to be a night that you don't want to miss and um, you know if you're more interested in you know what we got going on with the TQ midgets uh, please take the time to check out our website we've got a lot of great photos and histories of the club um, it's Florida TQ midgets.com you got to spell out Florida uh, Florida TQ midgets.com we've got a great website there so so check us out we'll have you up in the tower we'll do some side-by-side announcing for that sprint car race how about that hey that sounds good i'd be glad to come up here and uh, and, and spend some time with you jason i love announcing with this guy you don't have to prompt him or anything right? <laughs> but it's always a lot of fun when the tq midgets come to down here at the punta speedway because it is the toughest track in the south and the tq midget drivers are probably some of the toughest drivers around because uh i don't know how they do it especially this guy over here he can drive it sideways all night long once again guys thanks for showing up for turn five race we'll be 
be right back at you here in a few minutes at the toughest track in the South, the Punta Gorda Speedway. Ah, another episode of Turn 5 Racing. Bob told me to straighten up. I can't do that. I'm crazy. No, but anyway, another episode of Turn 5 Racing here at the Punta Gorda Speedway. It's been a lot of fun this past Saturday night. And probably, I, I tell you what, probably one of my favorite wins of the night on Saturday night was from the late model sportsman. And this guy right here, Danny Brown, driver of the number 98 out of Lehigh Acres. Man, Danny, that was a win long time coming, bud. Yes, we, um, we needed one really bad. We've been uh, plugging along for many, many years, um, and it's really, really feels good to get one under our belts. I remember when you guys showed up here at the Punta Gorda Speedway, and you guys had that beat up early 70s Camaro, and you guys were just struggling trying to figure out how to get that thing pointed in the right direction. Yeah, we had a 78 Camaro. Um, wasn't really qualified for either classes, so they kind of combined a couple classes together and let us run street stocks. And uh, we struggled with it for a while, and um, it, I still actually have the car in the garage, and uh, we just put a new one together, and this one's been a rocket ship. Now, a, a, a lot of people don't know that uh, you, you and the Ollies are, are, are actually kind of related, right? Yes, um, Donnie's actually my cousin. My uh, dad and his mom is my aunt, and um, we moved down here first, and they moved down here, and uh, we were running uh, open wheel modifieds up in uh, Ocala and um, Citrus, and we kind of like hung out a little bit, and uh, we started coming over with him when he was running uh, Road Warriors, then he went to the Super Stocks, and that's what kind of got us coming over here. You know, and uh, I'm glad you said that. I kind of forgot about the whole open wheel modified deal. I remember you showing up with that car. But um, a lot of people don't know you're from Indiana originally, right? Did, is that where you cut your teeth racing? Yes. Uh, we actually started running uh, midgets and sprint cars up there in Putnamville and Perrigan. And um, I got out of it for a while. I got married and had some kids. And I actually quit racing for almost 20 some years. And I moved back to Florida and uh, we started racing again. Well, I'm glad you guys got back into it because it's been interesting ever since. Um, let's talk about the new car, the, the, the Batmobile. You got a car, you got the Batwing on the front of it and everything. How'd that car come about? Um, we just wanted to try to put something together for the kids to uh, kind of remember us by. Um, Bill Van Dever did a decal package for us. Um, he did a phenomenal job. But uh, just mostly for the family and stuff, you know, we'd like to have the family coming out here, and Kevin puts a nice program together. Um, but that's how it come together. You know, and it, it is. It's kind of cool because you walk around, and you hear kids out here talking. It's like, oh, I like the Batman car. I like the Batman car. What a great concept to get the kids involved, too. I mean, you know, it's so well known. But, uh, you know, we were talking in the winter circle earlier, and you're about to get married again. Congratulations. Well, thank you. Um, I had a rough year in 2011. Um, you probably know my wife passed away. And um, I was living over in West Palm and driving over here on every other weekend when they were racing. And um, after that, I kind of like, kind of fell out of it. Didn't really, was too enthused about it. And um, I met this wonderful lady at church and we got together and um, I actually proposed to her um, New Year's Eve. And uh, she accepted it. So we're going to get married September 14th of 2013 this year. Well, congratulations. Congratulations to you, young ladies. So that's awesome. That's too cool. But um, congratulations on your first win here at the Punta Gorda Speedway. You're our driver of the week. And I, I think you got some more for these guys. That car has gotten fast here in the past couple months. Well, this sportsman class out here is very competitive. you got some really good drivers out here, um, and they really put their heart and soul into it just like we do. It just seems like, you know, if you get at the break, if you start up front, it seems like, that you know, you can stay up front. But uh, we got ours pretty wound up, and we got it dialed in, and uh, I'm having fun right now. You know, you, you had, a, had a heavy hitter behind you tonight. Aaron Williamson was knocking on your back door right there. I mean, he had every opportunity, but you kept it underneath you, got it to the winner's circle, had a lot of people there congratulate you. Anybody you want to thank that helped you get here? Well, I'd like to thank uh, my brother-in-law, Randy. He's done a lot of work on the car. He's really helped me a lot. Um, Teresa with uh, American Tax Solutions, she's my fiance. Um, she's helped me out a lot. I mean, spiritually wise, emotionally wise. And uh, Old Fashioned Auto, they're in Lehigh Acres. Um, it's a good place to bring your car to. 
Um, and I have, you know, some other people that, you know, come to the track with us. We're like the old group, you know, everybody's around us are, you know, 50 and 55 and 60 years old. So we come out and have a blast. Yeah, you, all you guys that are down there, everybody looks like they're having a good time every time you guys roll through the gate out here. And uh, once again, congratulations. Great run for you. And it was awesome to see you in the winter circle, and I hope we get to see you there again. Thanks, Jason. I'd like to um, have Kevin uh, make sure he puts his track back together, and hopefully we'll be out here in another month or so. I hope so, too. Maybe you guys come up, hang out with us on the second, and watch some sprint car racing. We'll definitely be out here. All right, great. Good job tonight. Congratulations. And uh, always nice seeing somebody get their first win out here at the Punta Gorda Speedway. And uh, watched it happen many, many times out here, and I hope I get to see it many, many times again. And uh, once again, just want to thank all the fans that come out here and support this track weekend and week out. It was a great night of racing. It's turn five racing right here at the toughest track in the south, the Punta Gorda Speedway. Another Saturday night of racing in the books at the Pentagorda Speedway, and guess what? If you weren't here, you missed it. It was like full moon racing without the full moon. Where was it? It was crazy. Let's jump right into it. And speaking of jumping right into it, the drivers jumped into the TQ midgets. They put them on the track, and it was exciting. Right down to the drop of the checkered flag. Coming home the winner and driving it sideways all night long. He's also on turn five racing with us. Chris Gimler, the 51 machine out of Palm Beach Gardens, getting the job done. And I don't know how that boy does it. I'll just shake my head like this. Yeah, I don't know how he does it. Coming in second, well, now second place was uh, Mike Belusher, the 63 machine. He had a good run tonight, and finishing third was the number 11 of Jimmy Wilkins the third. He got the win in the heat race early in the night, so it's great to see the green machine coming up through the ranks. Can't wait till we get into the new season with them. And uh, they'll be back on the second with the TBARA, so that'll be a lot of fun. Once the TQs were done, the Perfect Pest Control Pro Force came out into the track, and once again, full moon racing without the full moon came right down to it with a couple laps right towards the end with a restart. JCR Jess on the ball. And I tell you what, because the leader missed the shift on the restart. She jumped around him, took the win away from him. Great win for JCR Jess in the 91 machine out of St. Pete. Finishing second, the guy that missed the shift, the 61, Paul Richards Jr. out of Naples. And he's probably going to be shaking his head all the way home down south on that one. And finishing third and taking the championship, the 04 machine, Ryan Culver out of Fort Myers and uh, doing the burnout there against the front straightaway wall. That was pretty exciting. It just doesn't look right, all that smoke rolling out from underneath the tires, does it, Bob? He's the one who brought that up. I see. Yeah, it, it, yeah, front tires. It doesn't look right. Like you said, turn it around, back into the wall, and then burn them up. That'll work. That, yeah, yeah, that probably was the clutch he burned up on it. When the Pro 4s were done, the street stocks were up, and, man, they tore some stuff up up. It was crazy with the street stocks, but coming home the winner, probably one of the, um, I think, yeah, Jimmy Miser's probably been around here longer than most drivers, but there's a, quite a few of them. The 88 machine out of Lehigh Acres, Jimmy Miser coming home the win and had almost all the kids and grandkids down there in the winter circle with him. It was a lot of fun. Coming in second, Dan Scott out of Naples, another one of the old guys have been here from almost day one. And uh, finishing third, Mr. Richard Nelson in the 80 machine having a great run in his street stock. Of course, he had to pull double duty, and he had to be in the Road Warrior a little bit later on after that. The late model sportsmen were in the house, and they did not disappoint. And, uh, of course, there were some people that were disappointed, like Gary McFall, after we had to peel half of his car out of the front straightaway wall tonight. And a tough break for him. Not a good night of racing for the uh, Snot Rag Racing Crew. But it was a good night for the 98 machine, the Batmobile. Mr. Danny Brown coming home the big winner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. First win ever at the Punta Gorda Speedway for Danny Brown. That was a great win. I was glad to see that man in the winner's circle finally. Finishing second, Aaron Williamson out of Lakeland. Man, that guy has had some bad luck. The monkey's been on his back and I think they finally got the new car sorted out. They had a drive shaft blown out of the car earlier in the day. They got it fixed. Came back with a second place finish with no practice in the car. And finishing third, making the long haul all the way over from Homestead, Mr. Greg Gorniak in his new, machi his new machine. Same motor, new machine. Car looked good. Podium finish, Greg Gorniak. Love having those guys over here. You know, they make that long trip across the 
reality in the, in the afternoon and make that long trip back in the dark. So uh, we hope those guys make it home safe and get back over here and race with us again. The last race of the night, the Thundering Herd. The Road Warriors were in full effect and uh, back to the full moon racing without the full moon again. And they tore some stuff out, up out there tonight. Coming in on top, the Lehigh boy, Jason Miller, taking the big win. And it's a great way to top off his championship season with that win. So congratulations to Jason Miller on his win and his championship. Coming in second, the Nakoma's Connection, Chris Scott's back in the house. They had to do a lot of work to that car today before he came out into the track, and it paid off for him. They were wrenching on it hard and got up there into the second spot. And finishing third, this guy's been having some podium finishes the past few weeks, Christopher Loney out of Naples. So the Naples boys having a good run tonight, too. Congratulations to all of our drivers out here at the toughest track in the South, and you don't want to miss all the excitement coming up on March 2nd with the TBRA at the toughest track in the South, the Punta Gorda Speedway.